Okay, I think I'm gonna call this my kitchen sink tips for teachers <laughs> since I'm by my kitchen sink. Hey, I have a small story to tell and then an invitation. And it's all about this, this, the life of the small, the, the connection to the minutia, to the micro movement, and how important it is as yogis to understand the micro and the slow, and how healing it is. And before I tell you a little more about that, I wanna tell you that I actually have, I, you know, sometimes I forget about some of my experience. I'm an old lady now. <laughs> I never, I still don't feel like, I still feel like, duh, duh, duh. but, well, that's not totally true. I really feel my age. But back in the day when I was a young girl in high school, back in San Francisco area, um, my uncle flew down for four summers and studied with someone, a name you should know as a yoga teacher, as a body, as someone who teaches a somatic form of movement, which is yoga. He studied with Moshe Feldenkrais, who is like the guru of this whole generation of moving with awareness, you know, moving with awareness. And, and, and he taught people how to put their hands on bodies to really have kind of this functional but somatic experience of, of moving, you know, out of our habits and retraining the neuromuscular connections into a more free space. And I was my uncle's proof canine, guinea pig, back then. Like often in the summer evenings, he'd come home from his training and he'd practice on me. <laughs> so I was really grateful. It's my first imprint, you know. And then I also got to accompany him, I think a couple times, to a, a workshop or a day with him. And I met Moshe Feldenkrais. And so I had this really interesting imprint of that. At the time I was dancing and I started from that, from my uncle's in, uh, kind of influence, um, doing massage and body work. And I started like 17 or 18 and did it for, you know, 13, 14 years. So it was my first career and my first longing for being um, someone that understands bodies and how they move and how we unravel them and how to touch them and how to teach them. So I say that because th this history of Moshe Feldenkrais He's the pioneer, really, of this work. And Alexander came after, or a, near or after him. And then there was um, um, Hannah, um, what's his French name, Hannah Somatics. Oh, wait a minute, I'm blanking out Mr. Hannah's first name. And he coined the word Mr. Hannah, I don't remember, Thomas, Thomas Hannah, uh, Somatics. I think he was the first one to actually create the word in terms in the genre of this work, you know, soma, soma is a word out of Latin, the, you know, the, the, the soma is the body, you know. So now why is that important as yogis? You know, we in yoga often, we think we're understanding the subtle body movement, but sometimes in our training, me included, you know, a lot of these big movements and, you know, alignment principles that we perform and suggest and say will be helpful. They are helpful, but they're not the whole story. And if you really go down more of a therapeutic path, and I, I find that interesting because you could go into the therapy, like really helping people that are really in an illness situation. But I think yoga is therapy for daily life. So when we learn how to integrate like somatic moves, like these these more these more um, micro movements, in a very specific way inside our pra body practice, you actually start to really unravel like these deeper layers because we have different types of muscles groups, different type of fascia, and we have to tug on it and strengthen it and support it in different ways. So the body of um, somatic body work and somatic uh, physical education in, in movement practices is distinct from the yoga. Yoga teaches this kind of yoga asana and somatics should, if it's a, a proper course or an informed course that's 
seeped in this tradition of soma, somatics, the Hana, the Alexander method, this Thomas Hana and Feldenkrais, will give you a whole nother imprint. And so I want to invite you to consider getting some training in that because it will open up your eyes and um, also your practice. And so, you know, what, by the way, we're having a course coming on that topic in the fall with um, Simon Lowe and his co-teacher Jane. Um, Jane, 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 I last name S-T. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Terrible, huh? But you'll find it. <laughs> I'll, we'll link it below. I'll be there because I really love this work. I've been sort of armchair traveling through this work for quite a few years. And I just really want to be in the room. And I hope you'll join me because I do think it's an important one. And uh, these two teachers are also holding the traditional, what I would call the traditional, the foundation work of somatic work. Everybody and their mother is calling their work somatics these days. But it is interesting and important, I think, to come back to these foundational teachers that brought these certain kind of informed movements out that you can ground in and then expand from there. So my tip to you is, and maybe it has to start in your own practice, but I will just suggest, you know, there's ways in which we can move in a very small way and give a, so much information and more awareness. And there's one, for example, that I find super easy to do. I, for example, if you're lying on your belly, boom, right? And I always try to make, don't let people lie with their head up. Bring that forehead down so the back of the neck is long, right? So that length in the back of the head. And then say your arms are, you know, up, you know, on the floor or sideways if you need to. And ask people to first relax, because that's the key, is first this diving into relaxation is as important as the movement because we're training the muscles not only to activate, but also relax. And to get to these, these more muscles that are deeper towards the stabilization of your spine and the working, you ask people, for example, say this is their, um, their shoulders and head. No, just over. say I'm lying down. You just ask them to hardly come off the floor. Just imagine they're lifting their head off the floor. So say their head's on the floor. And you don't come up, but you, you if I just do it with my mind and I start to come up, you'll start to feel all your muscles along your shoulders and neck starting to work in a kind of steady, they're like, boom, grabbing, they're ready to go. You're, you're like getting the engine on and you just hold it there. And then the cue is slowly, really slowly, start to come up more, more very slowly. I mean, really slow. <laughs> and not to pop the head up, right? The head will come with, and then, you know, hold it a moment, really lengthen that neck, really feel these back body muscles, and then go down again, you know? The other thing you can do is you're lying on your belly, your feet are down that way. The same thing with your legs, but like, imagine your foot is on the ground, and you're trying to lift your knee, your leg up, but you, it's hard because your foot's ground, so you just lift the leg, Foot on the ground, not lift the foot first, you know? Actually, it would be like this. You'd lift your foot first and your knee would bend, right? <laughs> and so you lift it. So then you start to activate these muscles just this, just ever so slightly. And you see those muscles twitching and holding. And the body is so intelligent. And then you slowly let the foot come up and you just go really slow. So then you do that, both sides of your legs both legs together and then you slowly everything together a few times. And then of course you can go more into your more full extended, which is where we often go in yoga. We go from zero to, even when we say slow, we often go in exhale down, you know, instead of really just feeling, feeling. And then you, you start to train the muscles that stabilize the whole system to go along with you. Because what we find is often we have um, trained the big ones, the, one, the grabbers to do the work and these stabilizers sort of forgot their job. So there's so many moves we can play with in this, um, but that's just one little tip I wanna suggest as, a, as something to play with today in your practice. You could just 
integrate it into your practice and just give them that moment. Pause up. Every time they come down, a little rest. Do it again. Have fun with it. Let me know how it goes. Namaste. How do I stop this? Oh, here. <laughs>